Hello, hello everybody. It is uh, Nancy here. I trust you are well. I'm hoping to be able to make a quick video here where I am talking about this book, Accountability, and specifically I'm going to talk about uh, the open vision uh, that I had. But before that, let me talk about um, the two books that I wrote. I wrote a book, Accountability, and I wrote the second book, uh, is A Call to Return. Both books were prophetic books uh, that um, God gave me. Accountability um, is an evangelistic book. And um, with both books, God was saying to me that the coming of my son is more imminent than ever before, but the church is not ready. Friends, Jesus Christ is coming for a pure church. For an unspotted bride. A spotless bride is that the state of the church right now so the theme verse of the accountability book is Romans 14 12 which says so then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God each of us will individually stand before God and give an account of ourselves to him what did we do with our purpose? What did we do with our calling? And a call to return is also another prophetic and evangelistic book where God is calling the body of Christ to return to him. The state of the body of Christ right now is just crazy. There is compromise. There is conforming to the world. Preachers are preaching a gospel that is sugar-coated, a gospel, many preachers, not all preachers, but many preachers are preaching a gospel that is sugar-coated, a gospel that is watered down, a gospel that is adulterated, but God is saying, return, repent, and return to preaching the balanced gospel, old-time religion. So those are the two books. But God is calling the body of Christ to repent and to return to him. So, before I wrote accountability, God gave me an open vision. Prior to this open vision, I had not... had any other open vision before. God used to speak to me through vis through night visions and through dreams. Still small boys, words of knowledge from people. But on the 20th of April 2010, at around 7 a.m., that's when I had my first open vision. Me and my husband had just um, woken up, my husband and I. I just woken up and um, I was lying on top of the bed, um, just opened the Bible, ready to read my Bible. My husband was reading a, a book set by the table. I was wide awake and suddenly I started seeing an open vision. It was unbelievable. It was amazing. I said to my husband, please could I have a pen and a paper and I just want to write what God is showing me. And you see, I could see straight at um, this was us in our house and church was in town but I could see straight into the church I saw as if I was there I saw my pastor sat in the front row his normal place and I saw a man who was on the pulpit I couldn't see his face I couldn't see I mean the, him i mean but i knew there was a man there and i knew that this man was jesus 
somehow I knew that it, this man was Jesus. And he started speaking. And the message was directed to my pastor. I call my pastor X. So he said to him, X, if you love me, feed my flock. X, if you love me, feed my flock. X, if you love me, feed my flock. After he said that, on the projector screen, there is a word that just appeared. Accountability. If you had asked me what accountability meant then, I wouldn't have been able to define accountability at that point. But what is accountability? You might want to ask me. Before end, we go any further, maybe I need to define accountability. So accountability is that quality or that 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 obligation or that willingness to accept responsibility that willingness to account for your actions it is that obligation of an individual or an organization to account for their activities is that willingness to accept responsibility you know, and to discuss something that you have done, the results of something that you will have um, done in a transparent manner, to be able to discuss that in a transparent manner. So, I mean, simply is that obligation or, an, or that willingness to accept the responsibility. And we know we are living in an age where no one wants to be accountable. Chick, kids don't want to be accountable held accountable by their parents. Spouses don't want to be ac accountable to each other. You know, in churches, um, members of churches don't want to be accountable to their to, 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 to their leadership and pastors don't want to be accountable to, to their elders or their trustees. No one wants to be held accountable. Citizens don't want to be accountable to the government and the government don't want to be even accountable to the people who voted them into power. It's crazy. So we need to understand that we are accountable to God and to men. So back to the open vision. Right. I see the word accountability on the projector screen. Then Jesus started talking to my pastor. And also, he was also referring to leaders of churches in general. And he was saying that leaders of churches, pastors, pastors are accountable to him. They will stand accountable to him for their flock and how they fed the flock. And he was saying that leaders of churches should feed the flock with the gospel that is balanced. Then he started to uh, talk about um, balanced diet versus balanced word. It was amazing. I was talking about how in the natural, the body needs a balanced diet and he was saying that in the spiritual you know the church also need a balanced diet he was talking about proteins how uh, they build the body he was talking about vitamins and uh, he was uh, on vitamins he was talking about the need to preach the gospel about healing and he was talking about um you know, I mean, referring to the proteins and building the, the, the body. He was talking about the fact that leaders of churches should be able to preach a, a, a kind of gospel that builds the body, that builds the flock rather than destroying the flock that brings about unity in, um, in, in the body of Christ. Um, the kind of gospel that is not compromised 
because it is it is the, through the word of god that um that we grow not only just a word of god but a word that is not adulterated a word that is not compromised a pure word of god was the word of god tells us that you know in and john 8 verse 32 you will know the truth and the truth will set you free the truth is that which will set us free God spoke about uh, the gospel of he of healing that uh, in many in, in in many churches some people don't they say that the healing ended with the disciples so they are not even teaching about healing at all yet the word of God tells us in Jeremiah 32 verse 17 it says O oh, sovereign God, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched, and nothing is too difficult for you. Yeah, and the word of God says, I'm the, behold, I'm the God of all flesh, is there anything too difficult for me? He is Jehovah Rapha, the word of God tells us that by his stripes we are healed. So, you know, God spoke about a lot of things, spoke about the carbohydrates and how they, they 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 give the the the, the 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 body the natural body you know energy it's kept vibrant and he was comparing that with the 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 the, the, the word that is preached that it should be a a a, a word uh, that gives the body the, the body of christ energy you know that we are able to go out there and 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 preach the word and go and evangelize many churches they don't they don't want to go out there to evangelize anymore. They just want to sit and the growth is just insular. They want to be insular, but yet the word of God says, go ye therefore. We're supposed to go out and preach the word of God to people out there. So there are so many things that um, the Holy Spirit was, uh, that 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 um, Jesus went to talk about. And um, basically that a pure and adulterated and adulterated gospel is supposed to be preached and that the leaders of churches are responsible to where people go at the end of the day because of the word that they preach every day uh, God was saying that you know is part of speaking about the state of the church that people are no longer preaching there are certain messages that are no longer preached in the church today messages like holiness messages like abstinence for the youth messages about remaining pure you know messages about promiscuity faithfulness in marriage and all that they are no longer being preached in the world in the in, 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 in the church today you know it's surprising that some of the pastors are the ones who are leading to to have um uh, uh so some in america in america they call them baby mamas out there extramarital affairs in zimbabwe they call them small houses so his leaders of churches are gonna have to have, are gonna have small houses, other families in different cities. What's gonna happen to the members of the church? Some even make that it gospel, and they said, "Oh, look at uh, our people in the Bible, how they used to have many wives. So why not?" I, I was so surprised when I saw um, a man of God, a very well man of known man of God, preaching and saying that there is nothing wrong with polygamy they used to do it in the old testament i'm like oh my god god help us false prophets and false teachers will arise but god is still on the throne and jesus is still coming and he's still coming for a pure bride 
So we need to repent and return to him. So there are so many things that God talked about. He talked about compromise. He's talked about conforming to the world. There is so much compromise in the body of Christ today. Dressing. Many preachers are saying that we need to dress like the world so that when uh, young, 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 young um, adults come, they are able to fit in. They won't uh, feel out of place, you know. We have to dress like them, you know, like they do when they go to the disco so that they come and fit in. Do you think the people in the Old Testament were compromising the world, the disciples in the Old Testament, were they compromising the world, the world in order to fit in like we are doing today? Anybody out there who's got a sweet voice can come and, and, and sing in church even though they are very well known to be people who don't know God and who don't love God and who are into demonic activities. Leaders of churches just invite them to come and, and, and because they know one or two Christian songs and stuff like that. We have to understand, do not let your puppies, leaders of churches, do not let your puppies be defiled. And be protective of the of, of the congregation. Many leaders of churches are behaving like hirelings. Hirelings don't care if they they, 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 they they are not true shepherds, you know. The flock is not theirs, so they don't care what happens if the if a fox comes or if an, a wild animal comes to attack the sheep. They will not they will they, they will not be bothered, they will not put their lives at risk. But if it's your sheep, if you are the proper, proper shepherd, you go and try fighting for that one sheep. If you love me, feed my flock. Jesus said that to, to Paul, didn't he? He said that to Paul in John... 21 verse 15 to 17 so when they had finished breakfast jesus said to simon peter simon son of john do you love me more than this i'm reading the amplified is others do more than others do with total commitment and devotion and he said yes lord you know you know that i love you with a deep personal affection as of a close friend. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Again, he said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? With total commitment and devotion, he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you with a deep personal affection as of a close friend. Jesus said to him, shepherd my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me with a deep personal affection for me as for a close friend. Peter was grieved that he, he asked him the third time, do you really love me with a deep personal affection as a close friend? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you with a deep personal affection as of a close friend. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. So that's the same thing that Jesus is saying to leaders of churches. Do you love me more than these other leaders of churches? Do you love me more than this? If you love me, feed my flock. He asked it three times. Jesus asked uh, uh, Simon Peter three times, which means that something is very important when it is to be uh, uh, said three times that shows importance. And he was saying, do you love me more than this? Yes, you say you love me, but how much do you love me? So if you love me, feed my flock. In other words, what he was saying, that talk is cheap, Simon Peter. Talk is cheap. The evidence that you love me is when you feed my flock. So leaders of churches, talk is cheap. The evidence that you love 
um, God's flock is when you feed them with the pure gospel that is not adulterated, that is not sugar-coated, that is not watered down. If you love him, feed his flock. He said, feed my flock, meaning to say that flock is not yours. You are just a steward of God's flock. You are a steward. He's coming back for his flock. Jesus is coming back for his bride. You are taking care of his flock. And you're going to stand before him and give an account of how you took care of his flock. If you love me, feed my flock. That flock is not yours. Many leaders of churches, you know, they're saying, oh, my people, my people, my whatever, they're treating, uh, uh, the, you, you are just a steward of that church. If you start forgetting that that church has got an honor, then you get things all mixed up. If you're taking, if you've got something that you are taking care of, if somebody gives me uh, uh, their car or something, I take care of it knowing that this is not mine. The owner is coming to pick the, that thing up. But if it is mine, I do whatever I want. I can go gallivanting and stuff like that with it. It's just the same thing. Don't treat that, 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 that body of Christ as if it is yours because it is not yours. You are just a steward. The owner is coming for it. One day in the twinkle of the eye, it's going to come rapture will happen and he's going to come for his flock and we're going to stand before God to give an account of our callings to give an account of how we led the flock God bless you I hope this message challenges you I hope this message causes you to return to the first love. I love you, but God loves you even more. Goodbye.